At the core of the California Sustainable Wine Growing Program is our cycle of continuous improvement. So it starts with doing a self-assessment of your current practices based on the 227 criteria that are in our Sustainable Wine Growing Workbook. So you do your self-assessment, you identify those areas where you would like to do improvement that's based on what's right for your operation. Um, you take a look at what others are doing as a way to help you decide what's most feasible. You put together an action plan. You incorporate that, and we add targeted education workshops. We've had over 5,500 growers and vintners participate in a whole menu of targeted workshops that we've done. And then you go back and reassess so that it's a cycle of continuous improvement to look at how you're doing and if you are constantly improving. It's a program that was created jointly by my association, the California Association of Wine Grape Growers and Wine Institute. Wine Grape Growers and Vintners here in California really um, are very committed to the land because they understand that it's that stewardship of the land and the natural resources that allow us to make California wine. You can only do California wine in California, which is a very unique and diverse growing place. And so they, out of that commitment to the land and the stewardship of natural resources to assure that future generations would be able to do that, uh, really has been a driving motivation for growers and vintners to put together these regional programs and to just push the limits on their own farm. And when they came together to jointly create the statewide program, it was really about wanting to be world leaders in sustainable practices. Obviously water is a precious resource in a state like California. How we manage water is critical to being able to sustain our vineyards, but it's also interesting to note that precise water management is the fastest and best way to improve wine quality. When we really understand that interaction of water, how much to use at precisely the right time, will improve our fruit quality, which improves wine quality, there's lots of different reasons to focus a lot of attention on best practices for water management. The water management chapter has, I believe, 13 different criteria, and it really integrates water quality and water quantity. So it starts with understanding your water system and your water management plan. Um, over 50% of the growers have an annual water budget that they're working with. It's based on understanding how much water do the vines need, um, what's the water holding capacity of your soil, uh, what are the evapotranspiration rates, um, all those kinds of things that go into putting together that kind of a water budget and then very carefully managing that. Uh, many growers rely on the California uh, irrigation management system. That's a great tool for them to use. Um, they use petiole analysis, which is really understanding the plant and where it is in the cycle of development and how much water is needed. That's one of the most precise ways. They use neutron probes and pressure bombs to understand exactly what water is in that soil and what's really getting to the roots of the plant and not going where it really isn't necessary for the health of that plant. So there are lots of different practices to really precisely understand how much water the plant needs and when the plant needs that water. That's a very key part of that. With regard to water runoff in our vineyards, it's something that people are very mindful of because it is this precious resource, so we don't want to have it going to waste. Over 81% of the vineyards in California use cover crops at various times of the year. Cover crops obviously are a very important tool to mitigate runoff, but they also help with the water holding capacity of the soil and help build up the health of the soil, which is the foundation of everything that we do. California wine grape growers really are very forward looking. Part of that is that we are multi-generation business. I think the statewide sustainable wine growing program has been so well received because it was written by growers and vintners for growers and vintners. That's number one. Number two, it built on regional successes. It truly came from the, from the ground up. It wasn't a couple statewide groups saying, this is a great program, go do it. It was by the, by the people in the business, starting at that grassroots level and wanting to kind of fill in the gaps across the state. It's been a success because we've had a lot of collaboration, not just the collaboration between the California Association of Wine Grape Growers and Wine Institute, but that kind of collaboration amongst regions, that kind of collaboration with the university systems and extension people, 
collaboration with agencies. We have gotten grant funding from USDA, Natural Resource Conservation Service. We've gotten a couple of conservation innovation grants. We've gotten grants from the Department of Pesticide Regulation for our, our IPM education. We've gotten grants from PG&E for energy efficiency workshops and audits. So it's something we can't do our, ourselves. It's really connecting the dots and bringing a collaborative effort to it. One of the things that my board of directors for the California Association of Wine Grape Growers has felt passionate about from the beginning is that um, we should be willing to prove that this is something that can work across many, many commodities. And it's not just about the commodities that are making the most money at the time, because when our program was introduced, we actually went into a pretty deep down cycle in our market. But it's really about showing that you, we can trust a system to not make us a target for doing good, that it can inspire others to do good. And we are seeing many other commodities start to build programs of their own that work for their commodity.